This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter from the wonderful Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk professional wrestling. Wrestling Mayhem Show 597 Tuesdays. We've been celebrating sports entertainment. Ooh, that sounds dirty in my mouth. Uh, but uh, with us, we got the crew with us. First of all, Larry. What's up? Hanging with us here in the studio. No, don't do that. Sorry. sorry. No, don't do that. Hello. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and also with us, we got a couch full, full. First of all, Chad the Enzo. Do I still? Oh, that's not your stuff. No, nope. no, nope, I don't have your title. Chad the Enzo joining us once again. Looks very suave with your styles and your hair. Sorg's a hater. No, I'm not a hater. He's a hater. I'm not. Why am I a hater? He's working on a new video package for you for your big debut. He should be your big comeback. Your, the Chad the Enzo comeback? Yep. What are you doing? How are you, you doing? Why do you keep doing this basketball thing? How are you doing? What is, what is this basketball How you doing? Post thing? I, I, I'm doing, How are you doing? I'm doing, How are you doing? fine. I'm doing, doing okay. I'm fine. How, how are you doing? Great. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> okay. And with us also on the couch, hanging with us, Church. He's the uh, commentator for the Renegade Wrestling Alliance. First time in the studio, but not the first time with us on the show. No, it's not, actually. Second time on the actual show. Absolutely. First time was uh, via webcam from home. Yes. The the mysterious den, as you put it. The myster- is that what I call it? I, I think that's, you called it something along those lines. You, you, you said that I was finally uh, leaving the mysterious cave or den or something along those lines to, to make my way up here today. <laughs> Why would I say that? Because <laughs> it's you. Why, okay. why not? Sure, yeah. sure. And plus, it's me, so I would expect nothing less. I've been really hopped up on <laughs> cough medicine for like three weeks, so yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. A lot of things. What? Yes? More than three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways. Two years. <laughs> but Church, uh, we have a lot of fun with Church with the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, of course, yeah. commentating for a good nine years with that company. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, I, I I took a, about a six month hiatus there for a little bit, mm-hmm. um, and but yeah, I mean I've been there since the beginning, since day one. So yeah, it's been about nine years because they're going you, on ten. So you have seen some shit. Ooh, <laughs> to, to, to to even call it shit is being generous. I remember starting to film. <laughs> what was that? Twenty ten. I started coming back around again. Yeah, and man, to see where it's at right now. Yeah. That, Sanjay Dutt and Colin Delaney are like regulars there and things like that. Yeah, well, I mean, wait, what? Colin Delaney came in last show. See, I was, I was, I was not there last show. Yeah. Um, thanks to my suspension. Um, from you know that, that it is what it is. So, but no, I didn't know that Colin Delaney was there. So that great, I missed that. <laughs> well, um, but yeah, no, I mean, I you, suspensions. <laughs> from from where it started, um. To where it's at now, I mean, it's a huge, huge difference. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, you know, I, I, you, if you can find the videos that the blind man did, um, <laughs> and I'm not joking. I, I, you, I mean, you know this, Sorg, but I mean, I mean, I'm not telling anything that's not a lie. The videographer for the show at one point was blind man. He was legally blind. He had a guide dog, um, and he used to hold a video camera and take video. That sounds amazing. <laughs> I sounds wish there was a video person <laughs> recording that. Was it was it Wheels and the Blind Man? <laughs> Doing the show. It's so I indie mean, wrestling. That's we, the most indie wrestling thing ever. We yeah. I mean at one point it was I mean, we had our own version of the Special Olympics for uh just the the background crew, absolutely. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> the the best is sorry I, I and I think I might have told you this story. The best was one time where there was a problem recording audio for this guy, so he needed 
um, myself and Doc, uh, to go up and record video. We go to his house, okay? So, you know, okay, he's doing it out of his house. No big deal. No problem. Whatever. He was doing the video editing out of his bedroom. Okay. He had his, you know, uh, Mac server set up in his bedroom. And we literally sat on the edge of his bed and watched the video that he took and re-recorded audio. I'll be quite honest. That's exactly how we did some commentary for the Zach Allen DVD. <laughs> it's like Zach Allen's like bedroom, like hooked up to a computer. And a, yeah, no. Okay, but you were in <laughs> Zach Allen's bedroom. I mean, that's you, nothing new. Yeah, you were in Zach Allen's bedroom. No yes. problem. But we, in this guy's bedroom, there was there was not enough room to be maneuvering around in there. Okay. Like he just had random this piles This just turned of into stuff. a different kind of show. Yeah, it was, it was very weird. You had, um, to, you had to push his pile of dirty laundry off of his bed. Yeah, so basically. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that it, it, you could see like there was you know the laundry basket was sitting there with dirty clothes and there it was like the, there was the bed wasn't made and all this and the dog because the guide dog lives in the house obviously so the dog's laying up on the bed too and you don't touch the guide dog so you you just kind of got to put yourself into wherever you can fit in. This is really setting the tone for the show, isn't it? <laughs> I'm glad I could start off with such a wow. Bang. Well, we're gonna get into some <laughs> more stuff. This, of course, is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You subscribe to us on iTunes, Citrus Freaker, iHeartRadio, and the video version on the YouTube and Facebook page for Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're, of course, here live every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, join us on video so you can see this stuff going on and see how high Enzo's hair is tonight. It's it's gained some height. Since, it definitely is. I mean, you keep the, doing the basketball shoot, and it's, the, it's just going to keep gaining height. The championship run is continuing its path upward. Right. And so is the hairstyle. Yes. Yeah. And you can also drop us a line to that email address. Good times. At Good times. Enzo is no, champion. No, no. <laughs> Enzo is champion at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. <laughs> <laughs> that will work, actually. <laughs> at 412-206-WMS0. And you can h- send hairstyling tips to Chad the Enzo at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. <laughs> it is like unruly. It misses me. It's I me. Mean, do, do you need like some like hair ties and stuff like that? Maybe some pipe cleaners. Maybe no. It no. just this is it. This it's, is the hair it's, now. It's happened. Yep. Yep. This is where we're at. Yep. 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 <laughs> oh man, you should, get the, you should get that hair insured. That's the best thing I ever got off a WWE shop. <laughs> yeah. Lloyd's of London needs to come in here and insure that. Oh, jeez. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, like I said, we're here live on Facebook Live uh, for Wrestling Mayhem Show every Tuesday. You can join us and, and find out other things that we're doing there and over on IndieWrestling.us um, Facebook as well. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. You can support the show and literally help keep the lights on here in the studio at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. At the fan of the show, dollar level, our good friends, Bo Diggity! Woo! Ed Burke and Bobby F. J. Town at the Pocky Club $5 level. They get the gold wrestling mayhem show gold. That includes more hair jokes uh, over uh, our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling. Power to the Sparks on the Twitter. Tina Keys and Christopher Bishop. And at the Pizza Club $10 level, they get the state of the show updates. Uh, Billy F. and Johnson. And of course, we do also have the manager level, $20 level a month. And you also get a special. Uh, digital download exclusive from IndieWrestling.us when you join us over there. Support the show, then we don't have to chase sponsors if we get enough of you guys on here. And uh, grow the Mayhem Nation and help us grow Wrestling Mayhem Show. So, um, this past week was Survivor Series. More, um, than, more than just Survivor more Series. More than just Survivor more, Series. More importantly, this past week was War Games. You want to talk about that first? I mean, that seems like the thing you're most excited about, right? Yeah, that was that was the best thing this weekend. So. As we're watching Survivor Series, like Larry's just like, you gotta watch War Games. Just just go watch yeah. War Games. And I got that from a couple people, I think. It was good. It was worth it. Okay, so so what? So War Games is of course a, a, a match that was uh, made famous, sometimes infamous in WCW over a good like I don't know, 10, 12 years over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, two rings, double cage. With a roof on it, there was no roof. This there was time. no roof this time, no. so that automatically was like what? It, yeah, yeah. At first, WWE put the you know the WWE spin on it. I was just kind of like, mm, I don't know if I'm going to care for this, especially not only because the the top of the cage was missing, but 
the rules. The rules had changed too. You I know, like the rules though. I I was okay with the rules once I once I found out what they were. But whenever they before they actually went through the explanation of everything, they just said you know there's there's these cages up at the top of the ramp and you know teams are going to be inside of it. And it was like, okay, this seems a little weird. Yeah. You know the WWE spin kind of got me there for a second, and I was like, mm, and then I was okay with it. it after played out well. Explained. Yes. There's yes, now it now it could have very well not have played out well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. I feel like if this 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 match was on like a Survivor Series, mm -hmm. it could have very well not played out well. But yeah. NXT did very well with it. Yes. NXT always does very well. Like, <sighs> it wasn't even it, just that match. Like there were a couple good matches. Like um, who was it? Um, Velveteen Dream and uh, and Alistair Black. Black. They Man. I I hated Velveteen Dream before that match. Yeah. Hated him. Yeah. Hated him. But that that match turned it around. Like the I, the nods to ravishing Rick Rude were astonishing and so good, and that was such a good match. And I love that it was just like this respect match, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, despite like the kind of character Velveteen is, you know, it, it's it, it just delivered on everything, and I think just absolutely made that guy. Yeah. And he's a relatively new character right like well, he's, the he's, velveteen dream character is new but he has actually been in NXT, nxt for like three years yeah they said like three years yeah. it's, it's his third yeah, year he's been he's been there since i don't want to say the beginning but i mean he's like one of the their homegrown talents basically. yeah yeah uh he's a tough enough guy i believe um i believe so yeah yeah pa patrick curtis isn't it i don't, Curt I don't know something like that he's velveteen dream he's velveteen, velveteen dream that is he has been made velveteen dream and that crowd was 100%, 110% behind him, and he delivered on everything. Yeah. <laughs> His tights with Aleister Black's face oh. on it. Yeah. It's hysterical. They had, a commentary actually called out the um, Jake the Snake Roberts wife tights yeah. that Rick <laughs> Rude used to wear. Yes. <laughs> during their yep. feud. And it, it was, that was perfect. What do you like pulled his chaps off on that? I was just like, which is interesting because that's the second pants uh, related. Uh, spot that I've seen in the weekend, you know, or was it RWA? It's a little foreshadowing. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, I think both happened roughly at the same time. Now <laughs> I think about it, they coordinated. They coordinated, it. yeah, yeah, because RWA was at the same time. I, I didn't watch War Games until after Survivor oh, Series. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I just between that and I had a job on Sunday, and it just wasn't happening if I wanted any sleep. So, but it was definitely worth for me. War Games was worth staying up after Survivor Series and muscling through that and watching the whole thing. Yeah. It was exciting enough that, and it is, NXT always is, right? Yeah. Um, every match delivers. I was kind of curious to see how they did it. You know, the it seemed like the video crew had problems filming around the two rings, though. <laughs> did anybody else notice that? There was a few hiccups where they just weren't sure where they should where they should be. Should yeah, be. yeah. Like, it threw, it threw the, I mean, I, I imagine they're still using the younger... Video yeah. talent for this, right? Like when they split, and there was some in this ring and a majority in this ring, mm -hmm. and then, but nothing happened with the majority of people, and the single guys were doing something big, and they were just kind of like, "Ah, uh, we moved all the cameras to where everybody else was." Yeah, yeah, you could kind of have uh -oh. miss a spot in the other one, right? And they just like you see them like pull back real quick, and they're, oh, I hope we got that. <laughs> and and thanks, Patrick Clark, uh, being called out in the chat room to correct us there. Uh, thanks for that. Yeah, they um the video like it was very weird cuz I remember them pulling it, it cuz they did it twice. They did uh a, a, you know, a double team move in both rings at the mm -hmm. same exact time. And the first time that they did it, they only showed the one ring and it's like and then you hear the the impact from the yeah. second ring and it's like okay, something happened over there. What just happened? Yeah. Like go old school WCW and do the split, you know, camera thing or do the, the split video the thing side by side. Yeah, yeah. The side by side and show both rings at the same time. If, if you really didn't want to miss anything, then by all means do it that way. But I mean, at least like just go straight to hard cam at that point, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, you can see something's being set up, like just, anticipate what's going to happen there. there is a lot you know? there's a lot going oh, on no i know i know yeah, and, right. i'm not i'm not putting it on the video guys but still you know like yeah because sword's getting upset now that i'm putting it on the video guys <laughs> um <laughs> but no i mean hey, been that, there man <laughs> been there why is there six guys on three different parts of me and i only have two cameras what am i supposed to do 
uh, pull back. And juice. <laughs> <laughs> it's pick and choose. Hard cam everything. That's all. Yeah, basically. Um, oh, this arena is huge, isn't it, guys? Because there's a lot of people. Uh huh. <laughs> but no, I mean, and, and the, the other thing that I noticed too, even like the the uh, the one cameraman that they had in ring, the yeah. the, the in between guy. Uh, he got he got in the way a few different times. That yeah. camera got knocked around. That so. one he got hit while they were on so his bad. camera. Yeah, I felt so he bad like, for that Bwah. guy. He didn't have anything. <laughs> like, They're like, cut, cut away, cut away. Wait, there was a guy. Wait, wait, you talking about during war games? Because there was yeah. a guy. Was it during? Was it during that somebody like fell over during Nikki Cross's entrance? Yeah, one like of the they, camera dudes bit it. Yeah. Hard. Like I don't know if they tripped over the the the, the, he, the steps or something. I think he fell backwards too. Yeah, I forget where it was at, but I remember so seeing a guy he went who's down. tripped on the steps multiple times because I have no room in my ringside. You know, down. this is I almost bit in a wheeling a couple weeks ago, uh, but you know, or or took out, taken out by a trainee trying to pull cord for me, and they yelled at him and he's left the building. <laughs> so I mean, it's hard, guys. You know. Well, no, it, it absolutely yeah. it can be because I mean, the, you know, the other thing too, especially if you're holding the cam, you're relying on whoever's behind you. Mm-hmm. If they're the ones that are doing the cable and stuff like that, yeah. to to be able to put you in the right direction, like mm-hmm. you know, to get you where you need to go. You're, you're, Plus, obviously, you kind of have to you know, yeah, you need to know your surroundings vision, too. Yes, yeah. very handicapped. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, especially those big cameras they have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When they're Jeez. when they're looking through the eyepiece, yeah, that's all they can see. That's yeah. I mean, that's it. You're very dependent. Yes. yes. Yeah. That's why that guy in the middle he got he got jostled yeah a couple times. Well, yeah, I it, did. I did like it, 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 complete side note real quick. Uh, the the center grate that they put over the two rings, I liked that idea. Mm-hmm. Um, I at first I didn't think I was going to, but at one point I seriously thought that they were going to uh, double suplex Adam Cole off of those ring posts onto that grate. Mm-hmm. That is seriously where I thought that was going to go. Um, but it, it worked, you yeah. know, they, 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 in WCW, they used to use the, the split in the ring. Arn Anderson always made it in that split. He yeah. always went in between Speaking the two. Speaking of rings. Arn, they said he was in 18 of those things. Oh, jeez. Uh, uh, 18. <laughs> Holy hell. Well, remember, I, they had the tours. That's a lot. They had the tours where they did like six of them. Yeah. And they know. weren't televised. Yeah. He, they, yeah. They, they're like, well, there's Arn. He's been in 18. War games. 18. God. There was, uh, well, cause, yeah, no, because it was metal. the Great American Bash <laughs> stuff. That's whenever, that's where War Games first started. Yeah, yeah. WCW later pushed it toward the end of the year and put it in the fall brawl, but yeah. it all started at Great American Bash. And so the Great American Bash tour would go from city to city for, you know, tour the South for, for like, like two weeks. Yeah. And during that time, they would take the cage to every show mm-hmm. and they had a War Games event at every show. So I could see that Arn Anderson would be for an 18 a house of them. show. <laughs> for a house show sometimes yeah. in a, in like a, a ball field but basically a house, house show. show yeah you did war games yeah and you better believe they probably bled every night oh god yeah oh yeah without question they had to put on a good show for everybody didn't but matter. um didn't matter if it was being filmed or not yeah they had paying fans yeah and and they i mean they those guys back then would put on one hell of a show, but whenever you mentioned that, it made me think. I saw a post uh, heel book um, showed, you know, they, it was making fun of the comment that Arn Anderson was in there for, you know, eighteen war games. The tour, and, the tour, yeah, is and, the tour in 1988, eleven war game matches. And Arn Anderson was probably in every one of them. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. Arn Anderson probably was not only in every one of them, but started every one of them. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. if you go back and watch, because they, they actually have yeah. on the network, there is under their collections, there is a, the War Games collection. And it literally is just every War Games that, you know, they, they were actually able to video record. Mm-hmm. And every time that Arn Anderson was in one of those War Games, he started the match. He was always the first guy in there. There is Every a, single time. Uh, the year before that, there was a, a four-city tour of it uh, between, well, it was like July, August, and November. But they did one in Long Island. Jesus. And two are listed as Great American Bash, apparently. So, man. Man, they really ran with a concept. Yeah. Jeez. And let's say, I think a lot of these were, I'm, I'm surprised some of these. One was in Philadelphia. One was in Cincinnati. 
Um, and you know, the ones you expect, the South, uh, Charlotte, Oakland, Oakland, California had one. Sure. Why not? It was the NWA at the time. Yeah. I guess they were technically everywhere. Lord knows no boundaries. (laughs) (laughs) No boundaries. (laughs) Yeah, I guess so. Um, and then, and then from there it went to more of a relatively yearly thing. Like you, like you mentioned, um, not always, well, relatively, there was two of them, four of them. No, they did another tour in 1991 of at least five or six of them. Wow. Hmm. And El Gigante was in all of those. <laughs> so oh those were good years. Oh, yeah. um, but anyways, no, yeah. So, But to see it coming back. So, I mean, generally, it, it sounds like we're pretty positive on this comeback, right? I mean, like. I don't know if this is going to be a regular thing again, but I'd, I'd be okay with seeing it every November. Yeah, I mean, like yeah. One, uh, one, once a year type thing. I think that's as as a longtime fan of both because, like, I I watched you know WWF E whatever you know ever since I could remember, and you know the first station to have wrestling besides WWE F was TBS. So watching WCW, you know, watching NWA, whatever you want to call it, and seeing war games and and knowing all about it like if, as a longtime fan of that i I've, I've been waiting for war games for quite a while so whenever i heard that it was coming back i'm like oh this is going to be awesome I'm i like, thought they'd never do it well i didn't think they would do it because let's be honest war games even in wcw when wcw was very family oriented family friendly they still had lots of blood lots mm-hmm. of blood lots of violence you know lots of gruesomeness and so I, I anticipated this being more WWE esque and not having you know a lot of blood, a lot of violence. And I don't, I don't think that blood was intentional. Though. Well, no, 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 no. no. Um, I, I I can't remember I can't remember his name now that you mentioned it. But whenever he got scalped, yeah, when he backdropped uh, one of the authors of pain off the top onto those two tables, you saw him instantly grab oh, the back yeah. of his head. And then later, like they had that middle camera guy and he panned over for just a little bit and you just saw a pool of blood yep. on top of the, the broken table. And I'm like, the entire yeah. time they were working on him, like they had the camera on the other side of the ring. Like, yeah. Everybody just stayed away from. Yeah. Everybody was on that side of the ring. Yeah. I, I was, I was talking about, I, I, well, be, I think with you, Larry, beforehand, um, like you saw the ref putting in some work yeah. for organizing things. Yeah. Uh, Drake Younger was like all over things in there. Yeah. So, I mean, it's usually not quite that obvious. But you know he there was, was definitely so orange. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's just Drake's natural color. Yeah, I think he, so. He kicked it up a notch so they could probably they could see him in the two rings, so he could he could accurately not get lost in the shuffle. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the stripes they just blend with the cage, so he, he needed a, to differentiate himself further. He went so. with bright orange to to you know throw caution. Yeah, up there. That's the the old pen dot orange. That's basically. I think that's basically what his old tights were. Actually, <laughs> if I think about it. Yeah, yeah. So. Was he ever wearing tights at all? Um, what? What? He just said blended in with his tights. Anyways, war games. <laughs> um, <laughs> the whole NXT show was was really good. Yeah, and I like how they they always make it to seem seem like such an attraction. Like Samoa Joe was there. Orn Anderson was in the crowd. This is the place people um, want to be. Finn Balor mm-hmm. was ringside. Uh, Asuka was there. Yeah. Like They always make it like a, a, a big deal. And they make other wrestlers want to be there to watch it. Yeah. Which makes it that much better. It's like, hey, it's going to be a good show. This is, this is nice to see. Mm-hmm. Even other wrestlers are really interested in what they're doing. So, And I, I thought, yeah, I thought TakeOver was really solid. Mm-hmm. Up and down, I thought everything was great. Good stuff. Um, is is everybody else on the same uh, line with me? Where I am really on the um, Andrade Cien Almas's bandwagon now. After the last couple of matches, no, you're yeah. you're kind of like, eh, uh, no, you're not digging it. Yep. I mean, I don't know. I think some of the other matches stood out so much more that I just didn't. I don't know. Get into it. Mm-hmm. But. I, I, I can see that because you like, know what I mean. Like I, I don't know. It, I mean, it's not the show stealer of the card or anything, right. but but it was still like I, I can, you know, yeah. see them going with him now. 
we'll like see. he's finally delivered on hey he's this this mexican superstar i'm i'm i don't regularly watch nxt like i basically mm. only watch the takeovers which is fine because i'm able to oh watch, yeah i'm able to watch the takeovers and still that's like the people that watch it. i don't need to follow the that's story like the people lines. that only watch wrestlemania every year right right yeah so you don't really need to right so i'm not terribly invested in anybody until they have their match so mm-hmm. when i see that match following the alistair black and Velveteen Dream and the uh, women's uh, title match. I'm, I mean, it was a good match. Sucks that McIntyre got hurt, but mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean it, that match was more of the you know the technical thing. Yeah, that, like yeah. I, I, it didn't have a lot of high spots. It was more, uh, and I hate to say it was like that that uh, the cool down match. It was, yeah, and and that's a shame to say because it was for the NXT Championship, yeah. but. It literally was the cooldown match because like everybody was so hyped from that last match and then going into the War Games match, like that match kind of just brought everybody down. They, they kept the crowd going, but it, it definitely wasn't as high octane as some of the other matches on the card was. Um, I can see where Andrade finally has become a little bit more of a main event player. Um, like they're, they're you know, going to kind of rely on him more. Um could I see him doing what Finn Balor or Neville or Samojo or any of those guys did? No, absolutely not. Um, I think he's going to be the, he's going to go to the next NXT and then that's, that's going to be the end of his run. But they need, they need a, they need a heel like him, you know, uh, for the time being. No, no. And I think, I think he works really well with that. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, he works well with that. Plus, you know, the, the fact that he has the female manager adds in, you know, just the, the extra heelness, Mm, especially whenever she gets in and, and pulls some stuff. Like she did at, at yeah. Takeover, so it's kind of like the Lita of this generation yeah. a little bit, you know. Um, but no, no, uh, altogether, yeah, Takeover just amazing. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about Survivor Series in a second, but first, of course, we talk Takeover, and I love watching uh, these because half the guys I see on this, we see, of course, RWA, yeah. IWC here in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, you check out a look, look up a lot of those names, including. Guys like Adam Cole and and Kyle O'Reilly and and Bobby Fish definitely came through the area. Adam Cole most recently, of course, was Super Indie, uh, Threat Level Midnight, taking on local uh, John McChesney in a fantastic match. Uh, you know, the great uh, Super Indie tournament with guys like that and Jonathan Gresham uh, just tearing out the roof down in pro wrestling and uh, seeing guys like Corey Graves, the form, former Sterling James Keenan in RWA and IWC, um, it's really, you know, it's the pre NXT NXT. Hey, check out a lot of those guys and a lot of those and see who's coming up next over at indie wrestling.us. Go check it out and support indie wrestling and check out the indie mayhem show where we have a lot of great interviews, including church. We had a good conversation with you a little while ago about your career and in, in announcing and everything as well. Oh yeah. So, um, definitely worth checking out, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it, it gets, it, I always, I jokingly say that, um, Corey Graves is, is, you know, learned his craft from me, which he absolutely did nope. not. I had nothing to do with He has a Titantron now. He has an entrance Titantron oh, really? now. Uh, something was uh, uh, tweeting from Raw. Oh, really? Yeah. So. I did not know that. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I jokingly say that, but I, he, he got absolutely nothing from me because he could talk on the mic. To begin My God, with. he's good. He, he was, he was amazing. You know, I, I got to know him when he came through RWA, obviously, mm-hmm. um, and and seeing some of the matches that he had, um, especially you know, in with Ryan Mitchell, um, those matches were just amazing, and they even pulled a, a Iron Man match at one point too in RWA. So I mean, it, but to see him perform in ring and to hear him talk, and then to see him get the nod to go to NXT perform there. You know, unfortunate circumstances happen with his health, and then he moves on, and now he's doing commentary. Like, that's that's awesome. But man, a bright spot that I think we've been missing for a while. Yes. So good to see that. All right. Speaking of those bright spots, he was uh, keeping the Raw and SmackDown at a super announced table, um, organized. I think maybe. <laughs> Shut was, up, Saxton. Um, he was. <laughs> he was Switzerland. He was the Switzerland. He was yeah. kind of the Switzerland of that table because we had to have. Five people, so everybody can look sideways at Booker T when he says anything. Yeah, he should have uh, been the one in the middle. <laughs> Drunk Uncle Booker. Drunk Uncle Booker. <laughs> <laughs> he said some stuff during Survivor Series. So I was like, I don't know what he's talking it's, about. Just it's funny well, to listen to, though. Off the wall. Yeah, I was laughing. I'm like, I, he's saying 
just nonsense. Just Jeez, when, when on Monday when Michael Cole was 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 digging on him for working three days in a row, mm-hmm. that was like, what's happening right now? Um, but I, I, it's again, even when Booker goes off the rails, like I, I always say, I always like when the announcers sound like they're having fun mm-hmm. because I think that comes across. Yeah, you know, I, I think that helps convey. The energy, you know, as long as it's not taken away from what's happening in the ring, obviously. Yeah. But and I don't think it does for the most part when it mm-hmm. comes to WWE right now. Yeah. Right. They I mean, it, it is, it, you know, it, it, we've seen it countless number of times. WWE's uh, commentary is so scripted that it, it's nice to have that break because, you know, that that little that little bit of comic relief or whatever, like drunk Uncle Booker losing his mind and come going off with whatever he's <laughs> going to say or Corey graves going off about uh the drifter um singing nickel back on the south side it's just like my favorite thing from nxt <laughs> right yeah i mean it, it, it's, and that's yeah. and that's for us yes you know yeah. Yeah. Like, and it's not for everybody but <laughs> that's for us pittsburghers we're just like i know what the hell carson street is i know what he's talking about and, 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 I, I see you Corey. yeah i see you i see you yeah, i, I, see see you. You. I gave like, that guy 75 I, cents yeah yeah it's, it's like then you start thinking if you didn't know Logan Shulo beforehand, did I pass that guy on the street one time? You know, so by throwing change at him on his way to the ring. Yeah, that was probably yeah. Dennis Gregory, but oh, okay. <laughs> that's but that would only Old be days. me. That's probably just me throwing change at Dennis Gregory. Yes, old 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 inside joke. What a bum! Uh, <laughs> what a bum! <laughs> but anyways, uh, Survivor Series. I I know you know again the cruiserweights got relegated to the pre-show. Yeah, and with a lot of other random stuff, but I loved how Survivor Series was not the Survivor Series matches, but an entire series, right? That they were keeping score throughout the night. That it was yes. this big thing, and you know, you know, it's going to come down to the one match. And okay, you can say that maybe the the, the title versus title match was pr- very predictive because of the scoring and everything, but but still, like, it told a good story through the night survivor series yeah. became bragging rights it is oh it absolutely is yeah it, that literally is it, they like they took the bragging rights pay-per-view and just went okay this yeah. is survivor Series. and now. it's not like they haven't done this at survivor series before yeah but it's always been like one match yes yeah. right and then we'd have the rest of our pay-per-view it yeah. was a, Which, it was a perfect blend yeah. yeah of the of the bragging rights it was a perfect stage to use to do that and culminating on the year and a half of this whole Stephanie and Shane thing, I think very well done going into it. These invasion angles have been real well done. I don't know if they can repeat this next year, but yeah, I'm sure. I'm I don't sure see why try. not. I mean, I wouldn't throw Triple H in there, but you never know. I mean, and and, and like even the, you know, the last minute random, hey, John Cena and Triple H are going to be yeah, hanging out for this weird. match. That's like, kind of weird. Like John Cena. It's coming out green. Came out green. It didn't look <laughs> like he really even yeah. wanted to be there. Yeah. I, I don't know what that was about. He, is yeah. He got his pay per views mixed up. He, uh, Wait, am you, I, I supposed to be here? Is it? Uh, well, I think he thought it was just like an all SmackDown pay per view, so he just wore whatever. Am I proposing <laughs> to Nikki again? What's happening? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, um, but but again, throughout the night, I think it produced some. I I can't. You know, Shield and New Day was incredible. Yeah. yeah. Good forty-five minute match, I think it was. Um, it was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, I mean, yeah. It, it back and forth between all six of them, you know. And and I don't want to say the six man is a little bit harder to do than a regular tag, but I mean, obviously it is. You, you know, you got that extra two element in there. So, yeah, they did exactly what they needed to do in order to make it work. And um, you story wise, you couldn't really predict what was going to happen um you couldn't tell you know are they going to let new day actually beat the shield or mm-hmm. you know is the shield just going to dominate and and you know beat new day like they should so it it, it, it you know it, it was that back and forth constantly that worked out well absolutely yeah. and even even the survivor series matches uh seeing oscar clean house you know through that uh you know uh, 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 alexa and charlotte had an amazing match yeah you know, um, it, it just you know, like top to bottom, like it was they made a show that, you know, bragging rights is all it matters for. Right. Like there's no title changes. There's no yeah. anything like that. Yeah. So there's nothing moving the bar forward there. 
yeah. but there's a lot of story and interaction. Yeah, it was right? interesting too because yeah. it there was a lot more um, like spontaneity, spontaneity like to a, to the matches, like stuff yeah. that you would expect to happen didn't happen. Like yeah. um, uh, like Shinsuke getting being the first one eliminated type mm-hmm. thing. You know, a lot of like random yeah. stuff like yeah. bo- John Cena just getting like he's hardly anything in. Yeah, for that entire match, like he might as well not even been there. And guys like Shinsuke and and Bobby Roode getting to mix it up with Triple yeah, H, yeah, was yeah, was kind of fun too. Yeah, so like, I right? think the fact that no titles were on the line made it even better because you don't have to like you're not pinned in like wow if he loses his title like right there goes like stories or whatever yeah. mm-hmm. it, you didn't have to worry about any of that like mm-hmm. that's what made it fun for me like going in like man Corbin Miz it doesn't matter who wins or loses like title wise mm-hmm. because they can still do like they don't lose any credibility almost yeah other yeah. than they're i still they're still champions other than did you pull your weight for your brand the next exactly. day it falls it falls into you doing something for smackdown team rather than well you just lost to another champion just because you're mm-hmm. you suck at being the u.s champion or something like that mm-hmm. which was nice to see and it, I, I don't know it made it fun and like it wasn't as predictable mm-hmm. you know and uh yeah, that that main match, like you get to see guys who never been in the ring together, mix it up, and that was fun to see. Like I'm like tag him in, like oh this is great. Which, which really goes back to a little, and mostly because these were newer guys and they're yeah. NXT guys mixing up with your current angles and the Triple H's. It yeah. kind of felt that old feeling of that Survivor Series, where it's like, oh wait, this is a combination I haven't seen. Yeah, like yeah. Joe Orton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. jeez, yeah. like. How did that not happen with Owens being on SmackDown for, mm-hmm. or with uh, Joe being on SmackDown? Mm-hmm. For I, I don't know how how we miss a Samoa Joe uh, Orton. Was he on SmackDown? Joe was never on. Joe was on. No, SmackDown. no, he didn't be on Raw. I thought no, he was. Yeah. He's always been yeah. on Raw. Yeah, no, yeah, he's always been on Raw. It was because uh, mm-hmm. he when they pulled him up from NXT. It was that's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. he immediately went to Raw because uh, he was what, back in he, Triple H, wasn't he? Yeah. And that's a lot of, I, right. I, I think you get to test the waters a little bit there, you know, test that crowd reaction and say, oh, can we do this match? You know, yeah. is this something that we put on the drawing board for later to yeah. happen? So, yeah, absolutely. So. Um, no, I think that was fun. Um, there was a there was an interesting conversation. Our, our friend of the show, Von Johnson, out there in Philly, mm-hmm. uh, writes for Philly.com, uh, their wrestling column out there, uh, was talking about how uh, AJ, AJ and Brock had to be match of the night. And he wasn't entertaining any conversations with Shield I've, and New Day. Yeah, being, I followed that while that it was, was going interesting. on as well. Yeah, yeah. What are your th- your thoughts? I, I said yeah, but I thought New Day and Shield was more fun, but that doesn't constitute a better match. I guess I, I agree that New Day and Shield was a fun match, but mm. I thought if you look at what Brock and AJ did from beginning to end, they're they had the best match of the night because yeah. their crowd reaction from the beginning of their match to the end of their match mm-hmm. was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. No pun intended because the crowd was sitting and you know, when AJ's getting his ass beat, you thought it was going to be another Cena Lesnar match like, where he just suplexed. Yes. But like they even mentioned in commentary. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, he, the storytelling was great. His comeback and, and Brock still was dominating, but AJ had these flashes and you could just watch the crowd started getting up and they started cheering for certain spots. And then they started really getting into the match. And then by the end of the match, everybody's up on their feet. Everybody's clapping. Everybody's yelling. Everybody's gasping at the, you know, the, the near pin falls. And then mm-hmm. when the match is over, everybody's, everybody's, you know, clapping and cheering. And wow, that was a great match. So like, I mean, everybody was cheering for a new day and shield, but mm-hmm. like they suckered that crowd in. Absolutely. Yeah. They had them. Hook, line, and sinker. They had them on every single move. And that's, there's your best match. Like, not to diminish anything that the New Day and Shield did. There was an, that was an amazing match. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, from, a, from a teeth point, AJ and Lesnar just had, they had bite. They got the crowd. They, they sold it. Yeah. Sold the whole thing. I had a friend who, um, because uh, I posted about, you know, Survivor Series, you know, I'm halfway through Survivor Series and so far it's, you know, pretty amazing. I'm hoping the second half builds up. And I had a friend reply back after the Brock AJ match and said, 
my God, that that was a five star match. And I said, you know what? Brock Lesnar does better when he's with smaller guys in the ring because they can do more and they can go longer. Brock can go as long as Brock needs to. Mm -hmm. It's his opponent that dictates how long that match gets or how short that match gets. And, you know, a Goldberg is going to be, a, you know, an eight to ten. And that's it. It's done. You know, it, Cena can go longer. So, yeah, they, they went a little bit longer. Um, Roman Reigns can go longer. So, you know, he went longer with Roman Reigns. But AJ Styles can go. AJ Styles could go for 60 minutes if he really needed to. So to put him, you know, against Brock, you have, you know, two phenomenal wrestling people, all puns intended. Um, <laughs> and you, you can you can put them in anything and let them go and they can pull off a five star match. And that's exactly what happened at Survivor Series. Absolutely. And it didn't. And, and you know, Brock winning didn't cause AJ to lose anything. No, you know, standing ovation on SmackDown. Tonight. Yeah, I think yeah. It, it was backed up by that, that promo tonight. And, and there was a little bit of, you know, I, I stood up and no, I didn't win, but you were limping. And let's do round two sometime, you know. Yeah. I, I love that the door was open for that. Yeah. And, you know, you know, could that be a WrestleMania over one of the titles? And let's not forget Heyman's work in all this, too. Mm -hmm. he, he pushed Styles and, and, and promoted him in a way that made him Heyman's, you know, larger than life. And Yeah, like, Heyman's he interesting complimentary uh, promos these days, except for gender. Yeah. <laughs> he called what he called AJ was uh uh he put him in the same league as Shawn, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, and Ric Flair. Mm hmm Tonight. Mm hmm That's great. He ain't wrong. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was gonna say yeah, <laughs> I don't find one wrong thing with that statement. I no. mean that that's you know no. and and let's I mean everybody knows, you know, and I'm not gonna say anything that's not not known to anybody that follows wrestling. Paul Heyman is an evil genius. Mm -hmm. He really mm -hmm. is. When it comes to wrestling and it comes to promos and and you know promoting and doing what he did, he he's a mad scientist. He knows exactly what he's doing. He can pull it off no problem. You know, his only problem that everybody always gets him on is what he did with ECW, but it was no fault of his own. You know, I mean, it, it is what it is at this point. You know, everybody knows the story of ECW and how mm. it folded. And it, yeah, you know, Paul Heyman was the figurehead. He was the one running the company. But at the same time, you know, look at the stuff that he does now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's a, that's a, you know, the poor guy had to be the creative and the business and this and this. Yes. And he's really only good at the one thing. Yeah. 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 You're going to be you're, you're stretched thin. Yeah, you know, if you it, it, could you imagine if a Paul Heyman had a Turner behind him? Oh God, I mean, if 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 Paul Heyman had what Eric Bischoff had behind oh, him, oh jeez, yeah, we would still have the Monday Night War going on right now. Mm -hmm. I would say because Paul Heyman running, you know, a major company with financial backing, you know, people around him that knew what he was doing, he was just in charge of creative. That would have been, you know, something that would have been yeah. absolutely amazing to see. Yeah, that's his wheelhouse. That, that was it. That would have been well, absolutely. Even when he was writing for SmackDown, best yeah, years of SmackDown, the yep. ratings were higher than Raw the whole time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, Survivor Series in the can, of course, and of course, coming up is uh, Thanksgiving. We're going to be talking some Thanksgiving, but in in the meantime, if you're getting tired of turkey, go check out our friends at Slice on Broadway. Right up the road here, a slice on Broadway dot com. Don't no 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 Enzo. Don't kick. kick the door down. No, 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 no. No, don't kick the door down. Kick it in. You kick it kick no, the door it in. in. It, it opens in here, yes, that's right. So place your foot I mean, upon the door. Yes. And kick it in. Apply pressure. And tell them in a modest the mayhem sent you. Yes. In a friendly manner. Yes. In a friendly manner. Just you do that dance. Come Watson in. <laughs> And see if they call the cops. And demand the perfect pepperoni pizza. <laughs> and see if they call the cops. That's right. The perfect pepperoni <laughs> pizza supporting Pittsburgh podcast for a good long time. Our good friends. I get the pizza. That's your that's your that's your pepperoni dance. There he goes. There he goes. Cup of pepperoni. <laughs> right here at Beachview as well as Carnegie PA. 
PNC Park, home of the PNC the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yes, and uh, East Liberty, new location. Support the our friends that support this show. Check out sliceonbroadway.com, PJ underscore slice, and even and even they just posted. Uh, they just reposted that one time. They had problems getting into into their their first location in Beachview, and they're climbing the ladder of pizza success, and and it kind of didn't go very well. Go check that out. We shared it over on our Facebook page. Uh, you can go check out their uh, ladder follies over there. Uh, hashtag hardcore. Uh, so uh, thanks. Actually, wait, wait. Here it is. Uh, I'll throw it up here for you guys on the video. Uh, there you go. I mean, nothing can go wrong with a situation, right? I mean, we just have a ladder and nope. Mm. Nope. Nope. <laughs> there you go. Uh, hardcore pizza. Slice on Broadway.com. Check them out. We'll be right back with the big question. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. If only PowerPoints were physical things <laughs> you could hit people with. You could print them out. Oh, paper cuts. On like heavy boards, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, like those boards Poster they use boards. on TV shows. Poster boards. The big like <laughs> script boards. What the hell? The script boards. What was that? What is, what is this move you're making? I don't know what the What is this? Was. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this. It's a wrestling mayhem show, and we're making weird motions with our hair, apparently. Uh, uh, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here. Chad the Enzo. S O F T. S O F T? Yeah, that's the Gulak guy. <laughs> Gulak. Gulak. <laughs> the, the Gulak? It's Gulak. the Gulak way of smelling soft. <laughs> Church from the Renegade Wrestling Alliance announcing extraordinaire and of course Mutilated Larry. So don't tweet him, he'll tweet you. Yes. His people will tweet you. He and won't tweet you. Of course, producer Kill Missy hanging with us as well. Um so it is time for the big question. And at this time of year, we do the big question that we always do. Where I like to ask you, leading into Thanksgiving. What are you thankful for in professional wrestling? And this is open to you guys in the live chat room as well. What are you thankful for? I'm thankful for Drew Gulak's PowerPoint <laughs> presentation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Have yes. you learned a lot from the from I've, those PowerPoints? I've learned so much. I've learned so much. I don't chant anymore. <laughs> um, I, ju I don't jump off high things. No. Yeah. I good. don't have fun. You don't chant? <laughs> I don't chant. Okay. Nope. There's zero chanting. Zero chanting. Zero chanting. Life has been much more it's structured. Much, mm. much more structured. Okay. Yeah. All right. My grammar's improved. Good. Good. I've noticed. <laughs> Mine has not. <laughs> <laughs> We're on opposite. Chad's offices. working on it. We're on opposite spectrums here. Yeah. Chad, what are you thankful for There's in wrestling this year? And so far. <laughs> <laughs> Enzo Moray's trip to cruiserweight land. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and Big Cass's injury. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You're no, thankful? No, 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 no. Because, no. because of that, Enzo, to the moon, baby, to the moon. <laughs> I hope Big Cass gets well soon and comes back. But in the meantime, he's but the Marty. In the meantime, he's a big, big The Marty. sun is shining. You got to make hay. He's a Wait, big. What? what? <laughs> What you are make, you doing with your hair? You make, you make, are make, you trying to throw your hair uh, at me? I'm making hay. You're making while the hay. sun shines. It's, well, it's an old. It's an old. <laughs> listen, don't don't hate. Don't hate. That's what I'm thankful for. So is Big Cass not being soft? Is Big Cass a giant Marty Janetti in this situation? Oh he, my! You know God. what? <laughs> <laughs> only only history will tell. Mm -hmm. But as of right now, potentially yes. Yes, it's what? up to Big Cass to change that. All right, when he comes back. All right, Tanner. Meaner, Say, I am leaner. not going through that barbershop window. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is actually kind of funny because Enzo was kind of the one that got barbershop windowed. Kind of right. Yeah. He was play He was yeah. They kind of flipped the script. Then he had the he had the heel turn. Yep, and re he restructured the whole cruiser right division. Yes, he, yep. he restructured it and divided and segregated it. He's it's got, weird. It's got yep. the Zo train now. Yeah. Can't wait to see Strowman in that group. Everybody on the Zoe train's doing <laughs> good. Like, like the Rosebuds, man. Doing good. <laughs> Jeez. 
church? What are you thankful oh. for? <laughs> wow. Um, hey, you know, I, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for indie wrestling. Hey. So I'm going to be thankful for indie wrestling. Hey. I mean, I, I, I've had, you know, nine years worth of fun and excitement and sometimes misery. Um, <laughs> so it, it, it is always a fun time to do that so that 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 gives me my my one out every month of doing something and uh you know going out outside of my normal box so nice. yeah that's awesome yeah uh from the chat room we got a few thankfuls out here jd out there says he's thankful we we actually got a pay-per-view called great balls of fire <laughs> and uh, and in that show we saw one of two attempts on braun Strowman's life <laughs> I too am thankful for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like Braun Strowman is, has been the most like, yeah, uh, yeah, attempts on his life uh, since like the Undertaker ministry era. Uh, People have literally tried to kill him. Yeah, like, like yeah. Ooh, that dude's a threat. We should kill him in professional <laughs> wrestling. We should do in things that could kill him. Yeah, we should crush him. Crush him. Yes. Him. That's, he has he has survived all of that. Yes, he has. Also, Wheels is thankful for shake weights and whipped cream. What? You can check out what that means at <laughs> RWA Open Season at IndieWrestling.us. Available oh, soon. What kind of chat does he think he's on? I <laughs> his typical his typical nightly chat room. <laughs> yeah. That's no, where he, no, that's no, where no, he no. thinks he's at. Wheels, Wheels. This is about wrestling. Chat, Wheels. Room, chat roulette. <laughs> Wheels, that's wrestling. Wednesdays. That's Wednesday's <laughs> chat room. You're in the wrong chat room. <laughs> Wednesdays with wheels. Wednesdays with wheels and whipped cream. <laughs> the chat that just goes round. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. That one's free. Jeez. Hot wheels. How you doing? How, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Oh, jeez. I, I am w also. W-H-E-E-L. Z. <laughs> I am, I am, I am thankful for. Uh, I, I'm gonna go. I'm thankful for indie wrestling as well. It's you know, we were lost church. He's, He's dead. He's gone. He's dead. He's gone. <laughs> oh jeez. Hot Wheels is on the the zoo the zoo chair. Zo chair. <laughs> <laughs> Doing good. Doing good. How you doing? Hot wheels. Hot wheels is strapped to the back to the caboose. Yeah. <laughs> He's just being drug along. Doing good though. Doing good. <laughs> yes. I was gonna have something serious to say. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry, sorry. Continue. Please, How can please. you have anything serious to say with that hair? I know, right? <laughs> Look at that. It moves in so many ways. Um <laughs> the little known fact is it has a rat tail. I mean, the whole braided rat tail on this thing. Yes, it does. It just gets lost because yeah. it's in the back. Yeah, it's just it doesn't line up with anybody's head. <laughs> it's just like in the it's like in the middle of your head. Yeah. It's... Oh, you look back there. It's not. It only works from the front. <laughs> Jeez. I'm thankful for that damn hair. <laughs> Me, too. Me too. Me too. This has been some a great joy on this show for the last few Me months. Too. Not for the audio listeners, I'm sure. But uh, the, I'm I'm thankful uh, uh, indie wrestling for um, this year. I got out a bit more, uh, and actually, I made a point to visit every indie wrestling group in the Pittsburgh area at the beginning of the year. You know, not just the ones we're filming or anything like that. We had some opportunities, some open weekends, so we got to see PWX. We got to see Rise. It's doing some great things down there in Connellsville. Uh, we got to go see uh, KSWA and see what that experience is like. You know, um, and it's really kind of added a little bit of perspective to the area for me, you know, and um, it's been pretty cool to see. So, um, so I, I, I'm kind of thankful for, uh, who else is cracking up in the chat? Uh, I, I'm really thankful for kind of it's better than um, what he usually does in the chat. <laughs> uh, kind of, kind of appreciating uh, indie wrestling and the shows that I get to uh, uh, work with uh, these days. So. That's where I'm at with that. So uh, let us know what you're thankful for on Twitter um, afterwards. Uh, you know, uh, uh, WMS big question or, or maybe hashtag uh, WMS thankful. Uh, and let us know. For Enzo. Right for Enzo. For Enzo. 
WMS. The Enzo Train. <laughs> Only for you. <laughs> Thankful for Enzo. There you go. Tell everybody why. What what part of Enzo you're thankful for? Wait, what, 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 is he, what is what is he giving you? <laughs> what? Like, like his robe, his, his hair. Are you thankful his robe, for his right arm? His jean jacket. <laughs> pin, pin your thankfulness on the Enzo. His <laughs> Versace knockoff sunglasses. Take your pick. There's a Jeez. lot to be thankful for. Yes, there is. I can't wait till they make a fake bronze statue of him. Oh boy, uh, it's coming. It'll man. it'll get bronzer on it. It's, it's coming. Yep. He'll, so, he'll, be, the he'll be the only one. He'll be the only one with a standard. with a spray tanned bronze statue. And you can't teach that. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> what, what, what's, what's up? No, the bronze statue. They're going to bring back uh, Ellsworth. They're going to put that mop on him, and they're just going to bronze him. And he is going to be the bronze statue that they just oh, have follow geez. him around. And you can't bronze that. <laughs> There's an invasion, can guys. I, can I change oh, the fact ahead. that Go I'm ahead. thankful for something? <laughs> I'm thankful that James Ellsworth got future <laughs> endeavor. All right? Hold on. Hold you on. Realize, you realize. You realize the countdown has begun on him oh. showing up in RWA, right? Oh, it's it's coming, man. The minute that happens, yeah. I'm getting in the ring. You're getting in the ring? <laughs> hey, you're going to fight Ellsworth? You're going to put the dog collar on him? I hear he's having a career change to commentary. Uh, there you go. He doesn't have the chin for it. Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The headset would never stay on. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, so there is a bit of an invasion happening. We lost Sorg there for a minute. <laughs> he, he's really right, though. Like, this is a great move for Ellsworth. <laughs> he's going to be booked solid for yep. like two years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's better than. Him and the Rock what and Roll Express, man. Could have potentially been doing. <laughs> Indie rates are going to go sky high. I think Hooven uh, uh, refereed a match with him right before he went to WWE. <laughs> so, like, in West Virginia or something. So any, any man with two fists has a fighting chance. That is right. Oh, geez. That was with Braun, wasn't it? it Braun made him. Yeah. Yep. Jeez. Man. Get get your ass beat by Braun. Can't... And then you get employed for two years. Jeez, good for him. Good for him. Yeah, at least he's a, he sounds like he's appreciative. The best was when he had the tweet about uh, they were previewing Total Divas, and it was uh, uh, Carmella and and Cass is like moving into a house or something, and he says, yeah. "What? They've been together the whole time." Yeah. Oh, jeez, Ellsworth. Um, gonna miss that man. So there was a women's invasion happening on the on SmackDown and Raw the last couple of nights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Paige came back twice. She was on SmackDown too. Was she? Wait, was she on SmackDown? Oh no, that was that was Ruby, Ruby Riot. Riot. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I think <laughs> ah, you get the, oh, get too mixed up so so easily. It, Sorry, it's yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. You got they, the pasty white girls with the black hair mixed up. The, yep. Okay. Cool. Yeah. The, I mean, yeah. okay. <laughs> Continue. Many, yeah. How many were there? Three. 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 I think there was three. Three. three of three. them. There's three. That's right. Yeah. Uh, last night we have Mandy Rose. Um, can't remember her name. Sonya Deville mm-hmm. and Paige. Tonight we had Sarah Logan. Can't remember her recent name. Uh, and Ruby Riot. Ruby Riot. And, and Liv Lively. <laughs> what? Liv. Liv. I want to Tyler. say I want to say Liv Morgan, but that's the <laughs> yeah, character yeah. from Eyes no, Only. That's a, that's Is that it. her name? I think that's it. Isn't it? Yeah, I think it's Liv, Liv, Morgan. Liv Morgan. Yeah. 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 I think that's it. Yeah. Isn't that the character from My Zombie? I don't know. But the, what's the other Sierra? Hmm? Sierra? Who? Sarah? Sierra? What? What's the What's the other one? Ruby Riot, Liv, and what was the third one? The lady who's not furry anymore. Sarah Logan. That one. Sarah Logan. Mrs. Mrs. Ray Monroe. Yeah. Yes. R- R- Friend of the show, Ray Monroe. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. We had this, we had this discussion. We did. Yes. We did. Yeah. Um. What the hell is going on? Women, man, they're all the rage right now. <laughs> Strong, powerful females. It's good to see. Is this like a women's nexus kind of situation? Yeah. Yeah? It's it's an invasion all, all over again. Man. It's an yeah. in- influx of great talent. Okay. All right. But it, it's all, like, other than Paige, it's all the girls that have not been doing much on NXT. They're cleaning house to make room for NXT. New people. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's like so. you've, you've been here long enough. Go, go do things. I think so. Yeah. Okay. That way they don't have to fire them. 
I think like, we're just, not going to fire you. We're going to move you up. <laughs> I think it. I think promotion, it's more of a, of a of an enhancement talent type thing. I mean, like like, like an internship. Yeah, kind of. I mean, it, you figure it, it, after internship? so long, uh, we we've yeah. we've only had so many of the same exact women on the show. True. You know, on SmackDown, on Raw. So we need to bring in some new faces to throw in there, even if they're gonna, you know, lose in the first couple matches or whatever. They they need somebody different in there to to start a new dynamic as far as a storyline goes. You can only beat up Dana Brooke get... so many times. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, there yeah. was a serious question from uh, Dutters after oh, seeing Raw. Uh, she says she saw Paige come back last night. Why did she bring back uh, barbed wire and Balrog from Street Fighter with her? <laughs> uh, and you know, maybe if you you're not familiar with uh, 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 NXT girls, which I mean, even if you're watching NXT. You may not have noticed who some of these girls were. You all right over there? Yep. I'm good. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I, 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 I agree I, with uh, with Church here. Uh, that's yeah, I can only see Sasha and Bailey fight so many months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like before you're just like. But isn't there wow. just uh, a ton of women now with these girls added? That's okay. It's yeah. okay. That's fine. Yeah. That's look okay. back. Look back. Attitude Street. era WWE. You know, it, Attitude Area WWE, you had great women's matches, but at the same time, it was always Lita and Trish, mm-hmm. um, Lita and Ivory, Trish and Ivory. Victoria. I, Victoria was always Jazz. thrown in there. Jazz. Yeah, Jazz never had a great match. <laughs> <laughs> she was there, though, all I the hope, time. I'm hoping Jazz ja- didn't ja- hear that. Jacqueline? If, if you did, fun, if Jacqueline, was, Jacqueline? Jacqueline was a beast. Jacqueline beat up men, and that was great. She them in the pool um, at WCW. Well, yeah. Um, but uh, you, you, you look at the attitude era of women's wrestling, whenever like they, they made a huge comeback as far as WWF went, but there was only so many of them and you could only get so many matches out of that before it just became the same old stuff over and over again. Do you feel like, um, it, uh, you think we're going to be making room because I feel like there's a bunch of women that are not really capturing you know, we we just dropped Emma. I don't know about Dana Brooke. Um, I I think Blotter are getting kind of lost in the shuffle and not are not nearly as good as our Charlottes and Sashas and Baileys. Well, I mean, let's you, be, you need a, you need people who wrestle. Yeah, you do, you yeah, do. But, but yeah. let's be honest though, Emma, you know, wasn't a top name or a top draw, a top no, former no, no, even no, no, in no. NXT. Like she had her, you know, she had the the thing and the bubbles and the Small weird gloves. dance and then she yeah and then she she went through how many different character changes mm-hmm. in one in like a two minute segment yeah yeah <laughs> she went from that to wearing the small gloves and then like they were doing the promos about her coming to raw and she was going to be like the she supermodel emelina and then yeah. 30 seconds later like Vince is like, no, we're not doing this. Yeah, take and then they were like, no, let, let's it take it back to the way she was the last time, but not this time. And it, it just, it never worked out for Emma. Like, the best run that she, that Emma had was when she was teaming with Santino Morella. Mm-hmm. And that was it. That was the best Emma had. So, yeah, let's, okay, you know, if you're not going to be able to, if you can't get something out of somebody as many times as you've tried, mm-hmm. then you need to do something with it. Let you know, go. yeah. Um, go. I mean, look at uh, thank God, Eva Marie, like they don't have her wrestling. Yeah. You know, they tried. How many times did we have to try that? Yeah. L- Lana. Mm-hmm. Lana tried wrestling. Yeah. Ray, but Lana's been a great manager and it's weird that well, yeah, I think it's probably reasons, but you know, and now she's paired with Tamina. They're trying stuff like Tamina has been around forever doing nothing. Right. Uh, yeah. you know, Alicia Fox has become the most interesting in the last six months. Yeah. She's been you around know. for ten years. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I think I think the, the problem was like you start looking at like Emma and Eva Marie and even Lana to a degree, and you started reverting back to late attitude era. The looks over substance. Yes. The yeah, the hey, they look great on camera, so let's put them out there. Oh, they just had a horrible, horrible match that completely kind of bombed. How uh, the other Funk and Dak or whatever name it was, yeah, uh, gets out there and had to go back to NXT to learn to wrestle. Yeah, Cameron. Yeah, Cameron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, like it's just like, why were you even here? Yeah, you know, in the first place. So, yeah. yeah. 
Um, and it's really casting for you know what role they gave her. So yeah. it's kind of like Plus, you get Oscar needs fresh meat. Yeah, it's true too. <laughs> you can only kick uh, only kick Dana in the head so many times. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's interesting. I, I I don't know what they're gonna do with this, but um, and Ronda Rousey's coming. So. And Ronda Rousey's gonna kick everybody Gosh. in the face. So she's coming. No, you're not down with this idea. <laughs> no, she's coming. Uh huh. You don't uh, have to like it, but okay. Sports Illustrated will. I'm looking for right. To what Sports Illustrated will pick up on that. Yeah, I guess that's what the point is. Mm-hmm. Is to get it's... the people like that say, "Oh, Brock Lesnar is going to kick somebody in the face. I'm going to buy that pay per view." Yeah, that's yeah. why he shows up every three months. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Oh, I remember Goldberg used to jackhammer people in ten seconds. Let's do that a couple of times to sell some pay per views. That's the point. It's yeah. the point. I think Let's I think people's... Ronda Rousey would be a lot better in a WWE than what people may think. I think she'll be able to have fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think it'll translate well. Absolutely. They put her in a, put her in a match with Oscar. Oh you tell God. me they're not going to kick the shit out of each other. Oh jeez. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's. Oscar's going to get a lot of stuff. I'm not going to understand, but I'm going to like get it. <laughs> I don't know. As long as she can sell, I mean. If she goes in there like invincible, like Shayna Baszler did originally. Mm-hmm. That's, that's right, that's and that's not, where that's I think fun. like I that's think she's fun. gonna have fun. Yeah. I think she'll. I think she will be able to sell. Mm-hmm. I think she'll be able to like communicate and have have like a. Yeah. She's gonna have fun doing stuff. You know, just like Brock. Wouldn't it be great if yeah. Ronda yeah. just became the Ken Shamrock of the women's division? <laughs> right. <laughs> if she brings back the lion's den, <laughs> oh, please. Oh my God. A female lion's den? Ah. The lioness den? Man. Yeah. Oh. Zoe Train. Everybody's doing good. <laughs> Everybody. Let's not forget that Ken Shamrock had the match in the dungeon the dungeon match. Mm-hmm. Against Owen Hart mm-hmm. in the in the ba- the basement at the, the Hart household. Jeez. Innovator. Head of his Guys. Mind. What did <laughs> what did you learn from wrestling this week? Oh shit. Um I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> a lot. We do it every I, week. I know. I didn't expect you to bring you it up just now. It in. You s- what are we gonna? No like, sneaky sorg. The sneak- the sneaky. Well, yeah, I, uh, sneaky. I know. Um, no sneaky sorg. I, I still like NXT. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's good to know. I, ha- I haven't watched NXT since the that's last good. takeover, and I don't even honestly remember what happened in that last takeover. <laughs> I like this one. I might not be watching the weekly show, but. I'll probably watch the next takeover. Good. That's it. They got your nine ninety nine out of the way. Yeah, absolutely. Also, I also learned that I really need to watch two hundred five live when we're done with this because of that street fight with Drew Gulak. Yes. That's a <laughs> Guys. Um, I mean, what I learned this week was that the old school, and we we talked about this a little while ago. The old school WWF big guy versus big guy does not work for NXT. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That Wrong was the crowd. only that the, Wrong you know, crowd. yeah that was the only slow downfall moment of Takeover. That's was... why that's why Braun went from Rosebud to Wyatt Family. <laughs> Again, how did that guy hide in the Rosebuds? <laughs> He's a chameleon, man. I mean. <laughs> Go back and like, who's this goofy yeah. big guy? You know, what the hell are they going to do with this guy? That, guy, now, that guy's got range. Oh, geez, he does. <laughs> oh, geez. Like, I just challenge you just to go find him in the Rosebuds in NXT. Hell of a performance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Drifter was one, too. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. We, were, we were just like, hey, Logan was on TV this week. He was a Rosebud, but, you know, a lot of, a lot of our friends of the show... Uh, Ray Lynn was a rosebud. Potter, uh, referee locally, was a rosebud. Jimmy uh, Nuts. Jimmy Nuts was. Oh yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy was. Nuts. Wasn't he Jimmy a Nuts was in was in the rosebuds. Was, he, was yeah. he a banana or something? Oh, I can't remember. I feel like he was uh, a banana. I want to say yeah, he was in some type of costume of some sort. But yeah, I remember. I remember him being on there too, and I was just like, wait, what? <laughs> Did Jeez. I just see that? <laughs> Jeez. Um. But you were talking about Braun Strowman and his his range. Mm-hmm. Um, have you, do you have you guys watched the Ride Along series on the network? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you see the one episode where they were talking about Braun Strowman and apparently, like when he's traveling, he has to stop somewhere and and poo. 
So they've like, there's an app now oh, apparently yeah. that you can like, you know, places I've pooed and like they, they were like, you know, this would be the greatest thing for Braun Strowman. And then they just showed a map with the poo emoji and then Braun Strowman's face on it. And it was like, <laughs> pooed here, he's pooed here, he's pooed here. Oh, geez. <laughs> I want to see a ride along with him. Like, who does he go along with? You know, like. Well, I would have said James Ellsworth, but they ruined that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would have been gold. Wow. Uh, Where are we going, little buddy? Chad, did you? Uh, I, t- I-, I learned that. He rides with Enzo now. <laughs> yeah. Yep. How he you rides doing? with Enzo. How you doing? Neville. Um, I learned Aww. that uh, Triple H is really pushing for this feud with Iron Man because he looks just like okay. Jeff Bridges from <laughs> Iron Man. The first that, movie. He said that on Sunday. And I tweeted out, like, he's really going for this. Was it Jedediah Stone? I, I can believe oh, he I, comes I, I out. Stayed. If he comes out of WrestleMania in a warmonger suit, is, I called it. We had this conversation this Sunday. Con- yeah. Conversation. Yeah. This happened. Down to the, Triple H down to the suit at WrestleMania. Triple H loves really big entrances at WrestleMania. <laughs> I know. And if he's going to fight Braun Strowman, which is potentially rumored, he's going to wear that warmonger. The Iron Man, it's, it's come out in the yeah. suit. And I'm going to be like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> that suit's going to be the new owl. And then it'll come, off, it'll come open. And Triple H will step out. And then... I was say, the mechs are a thing now. He, don't, they I, could we, build one for WrestleMania. We just they said could. it. Now he's going to do well, it. Well, it's going to be he New Orleans, right? So New Orleans. I wonder how he can tie that into it. Brandon learned that uh, nobody likes Kevin Owens, including Vince. You guys see it 365? Yeah. I haven't, oh I haven't watched oh, it yet. Oh, there's a point where... There's so much wrestling. That's, I know, that's right? the one thing that I didn't get to watch. Yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a point there after the WrestleMania match with Chris Jericho where he comes back and he asks, uh, you know, are we good, Vince? He says, no. And just mm-hmm. ignored him. Yeah. yeah. And it was like the most awkward... And like, and- yeah, oh, Enzo stood seconds. there like a, a a disciplined child. Well, I think he had after, to talk, I think he had to talk to him afterwards, and they just didn't show that on camera. Yeah, but I mean, it, like it was just weird yeah. how he stood there though. Like he kind of put his head down a little, and he just had his hand like on something that was right there in front of him, and he yeah. was just kind of like he, he literally looked like a disciplined child. Like you mm-hmm. got told to go stand in the corner, and he was just standing there yeah. like. Okay, yeah. I'm ready to get it, my it, butt it, kicked by it re- Vince. <laughs> it reminds you that like everything goes through Vince. Yeah. No matter what, everything still goes through Vince. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's crazy. And also good sometimes. Sometimes. Maybe. But the also majority of the time, yes. Yeah, sometimes. But also, if you see something really good and you see it again, it's because Vince liked it. Yeah. So you know, if you see it it's in a little NXT, bit of a perspective. If you see it in NXT and then you see it again in NXT, it's because uh, Triple H liked it. Also, Triple H's <laughs> face sitting beside Vince when he said that mm. was just like, it was just like, oh shit. Triple you H, know, I didn't know like, like a, yeah, take a look at Triple H's reaction. <laughs> at, Triple at H's face too. while getting choked by Braun was pretty good. That was pretty good too. I've never really seen well, Triple H look I learned, I learned that Braun. Telling Triple H that if you ever do that again, you'll never play this game again is my favorite thing ever. <laughs> wow. That was the highlight of Survivor Series for me on a match on a show that had amazing matches and just Braun like cutting a corner promo with Triple H threatening his life. And, uh, then, and then Monday just walking right up to him. Pop, got, got a problem with you. <laughs> he just popped his ball and left. Oh, jeez. That was... I, I know everybody's saying how convoluted, weird, 99... Attitude era that was, but I miss that, and yeah. I love the the awkwardness and the Braun Strowman reaction and and everything like that. Like that made Braun one kind of a good guy. Yeah, Braun, which, Braun saved that. Like that's yeah. classic Triple H. But usually back then, that was the end of the show. Yeah, yeah. Like, Triple H did that. <laughs> the show like, would have really sucked like, if he didn't go and choke him. Yeah, but yeah. Like, Braun just like. So yes. confused, and I was like, I remember watching, like, oh, Triple H, you done fucked up. <laughs> yeah, Braun does not look happy. And of course, and Braun, like Braun stood there kind of confused for yeah, a little bit, I and then all that. of a sudden, he's it, you saw the light bulb go <laughs> off, and he was like, oh, 
I need to get in there now. And yeah. he climbs over the top rope, and that's whenever it was like, okay, now, now we're but good. Am, am I mad? Am I mad? Yeah, I think I need to hurt him. I'm yeah. going there. I'm going to yeah. choke him. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm going to like choke him and tell him like we're not he was rerunning the whole match in his head. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> like who was eliminated? Who eliminated? Who? Where? Oh, that oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> that bastard. Uh, JD's in the chat room saying he learned that John Cena's new schedule is to arrive, get pinned, and leave. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, wait. John Cena's just reestablished the new job squad. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> pin yeah. me, pay me. He's the he's the John <laughs> squad. Make, make my movie come out the weekend. Star Wars does. <laughs> <laughs> Who made that decision? Oh boy. But oh, how about the new catchphrase? When my hand goes up, your mouth goes close. <laughs> that's what Baron Corbin had one line to say, and that's what he said when he beat the Miz. When my hand goes up, your mouth goes close. <laughs> oh, Barry! I was Gordon. like, "Oh, come, come on, man!" Church. It's, um, I, I go, go uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention too, because you were talking about the 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 whole Triple H thing. Um, the faces that Triple H made when Finn Balor and Shinsuke got in the ring, and the entire crowd started chanting NXT. Triple H just like stopped and he, like the camera was on hard cam and you just saw Triple H like proud pop a moment. Yeah, this is happening right now. All right, good, good, good. And then he walks into the the Titantron at the end of the night. <laughs> uh, so Goofy, that, it's a good icebreaker. Goofy Triple H is all over the place. It's, it, it's fantastic. If you see the clips of him on the tour pretending to be Shield, dancing with the New Day, I mean. He's in the I'm going to have fun right now yeah. <laughs> kind of uh, uh, point. Yeah. So it, it's, it's like a lot of fun. I'm, I'm printing money part. Yeah, yeah basically. Yeah. He's like, NXT's rolling. I can do whatever I want. Yeah, basically. He's on right? the Zoe train. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> Triple H is doing good. <laughs> Mad Mike. Hey, Mad Mike finally, uh, he got home from work. He's in the chat room. He says uh, uh, just uh, very subtly, fuck Triple H. Also, hi. Oh, well, there you go. So there yeah. you go. Hi, Mike. <laughs> hi, Mike. And now it's time to end the show. <laughs> Church, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Of course, you can hear his voice. <laughs> the ding went off. <laughs> I think that was my watch, actually. Yeah, it was. Is it time, I got, is I got, it, no, no, is it time to stand I, up? My move goal is at 400%, apparently. Oh, jeez. Right? <laughs> it's all that dance. It's because of the Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Doing good. <laughs> Doing good. <laughs> Where can people find you online? Um, the Zoe wow. Train. Wow, yeah, the, on the Zoe Train. <laughs> um, no, I mean, you can find me on Facebook. Search, uh, you know, we can go to the RWA page. You used page. to, you used can to do, do this all the time at the end of the show. Yeah, I know. I, it, it's been so long because we, we we haven't been doing it for a while. Um, you know, twitter.com slash ringer of church. You can always you go. go there, too. And That's the there. easiest way to find me. And, of course, commentary on uh, most of the RWA releases. Absolutely. For the last, like, ten years. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Six months, and then an, an, now another two. So yep. eight months out of ten years, uh, uh, you can hear this wonderful, Slack. wonderful voice. Slacker. Yeah, I know. What can I say? As you do. Chad the Shad on the Twitter. Yes. That's all your internet things. Yep. All, all Chad the Shad. All Chad the Shad all yep. the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Doing good. Doing good on that Zoe train. Yeah, yeah. Hey, get the hair fixed. We later, Larry. Thank you for joining us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm also on the Twitter. We need something. One day you'll have something to promote, right? Yep. yep. I I'll, mean, I'll be on the Twitter. I soon. mean, there's something in the. You'll be on the Twitter soon. I have a feeling. One day you have a feeling. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Oh, he just got on the Zoe train. <laughs> just, so. just like, just can, like those Oscar vignettes. Can I feel it in the air tonight? <laughs> I don't know about that. That's oh Lord. Weird. Do, do, you do, need to end the show. <laughs> Oh no 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 no! Okay, and of course everything else. Sugartronmedia dot com. A lot of great shows going on there, and also Mad Mike learned that it doesn't matter how talented a wrestler you are, how much you did on the indies, it will always come down to fucking McMahon drama. I miss Lucha Underground. <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, stay tuned. Of course, in a few weeks, while we're uh, December twelfth, we'll be having our 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 Christmas special here, and we invite everybody to come down, join us in studio. We're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna sing songs, 
I think there'll be a tree, and they'll probably be drinking for Indie Mayhem Show with the sexy, talented dudes. Uh, until then, we'll see you guys next time. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank Mayhem you. out. How you doing? Wait, just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the perfect time then attack. Don't give up what you want. Take it back. Wait for the perfect time then attack. Don't this show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.